Who would have all of these different barrel lengths to test the velocity in 762 by 39? We would. Everything from 8.3 inches to 21.5. Let's see which one performs the best. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms out here at Take Aim Training and Range with all of this 7.62x39 goodness one individual could ask for. And uh, what we got in front of us today are, well, a bunch of guns we're going to be shooting because we want to find out the velocity of 7.62x39 out of all these different barrels. So let's just start down on this end over here. We've got the 8.3 inch Galil Ace. We have a uh, 10 inch 7.62x39 AR. We've got the uh, Help Up by Pioneer Arms with a 11.8 inch barrel. M plus M M10X with a 12.5. Meridian Defense Volk with the 14.5 inch barrel. We've got the Mark 47 by CMMG and the Zostava M70, both with uh, 16 inch barrels but we're gonna be, we're gonna see how they perform since they're two different platforms, kind of. Uh, the SKS with a 20 inch barrel and then the Century Arms RPK, uh, which is a 21 and a half inch barrel. Naturally, you already know with the longer the barrel, the more generated, or I should say, the more pressures that are gonna be generated and ultimately uh, more velocity down range. But for 760 by 39, are we gonna see that big of a difference uh, from an eight inch or 8.3 inch Galil Ace all the way down to a 21.5 inch RPK. I don't know, we'll find out. So we've got the chronograph set up, let's start shooting. So what we did was we went to the range, we shot 10 rounds through each of the guns that you see right here, everything from an 8.3 inch barrel all the way up to a 21 and a half inch barrel. And we wanted to see which averages we got out of 10 rounds were some of the best, right? And the ammunition we used, 122 grain, Red Army Standard, right? I mean, the stuff works, can't be mad about it, comes in a little spam can if that's what you want. Pretty cool stuff, and a uh, oh, white box, simple stuff. Like, we just decided to go with some of the you know, most popular stuff that we sell, like all these guns that you see here in front of you, and uh, just figure out, well, which one's gonna perform the best. Now, advertised, uh, where I'm assuming, I didn't see exactly where the barrel length was, but I'm assuming out of a 16 inch barrel, because that's pretty much the standard for all of your AK, AKM variants, uh, 2,350 feet per second was the average velocity out of a 16 inch barrel for the Red Army Standard 122 grain round. Cool. We'll find out if that's exactly what we got or not whenever we actually set up the chronograph and started shooting these, uh, we'll let you know. But let's go ahead and just talk about some of the results that we got. Uh, from the 8.3 inch Galil Ace. Let me just move this out of the way and roll into this. So of course we all know and love the Galil. Proven, reliable Galil. And the Galil Ace is a fantastic little pistol that this variant is in. Of course I make rifles. This is the Gen 2. The Gen 1 was also super cool. Uh, some people actually kind of like prefer the Gen 1 because it had the integrated night sights, uh, Picatinny rail, but I will say this is a pretty slick uh, overall design for the glue ace, but out of the 8.3 inch barrel, which is the shortest one that we had, we got an average velocity of 1,992 feet per second. Okay, so kind of slow, right? And that's to be expected with these shorter barrels. But what about the jump up to what we see here with the 10 inch radical? This is of course a <laughs> AR chambered in 7.62 by 39. And uh, we did see quite the increase to a 10 inch, so 8.3 to 10 inch, we are now looking at 2,189 feet per second. So pretty significant jump uh, for just a couple of inches. This couple of inches matter, right? Okay, what about 1.8 inches more, 11.8 out of the Pioneer Arms Help Up? Again, super popular little pistol that we sell. Uh, this one right here, not a huge jump. Again, this is a 11.8 um, inch, 2,180. So not a huge jump forward by any means, but for whatever reason, we got a little bit less actually. So from the 10 inch 2,189 to 2,180, again, that's kind of weird from the 10 to 11.8, I don't know. But then we move to the 12.5 that we have and the M plus M that you see right here. And now we're sitting at uh, 2,200 even. So 2,200 feet per second even from the 2180 to 2189. So these not huge differences all right in here. So why we backtracked a little bit from the 10 inch to the 11.8, 
you know, I'm not sure. Uh, could have been, honestly, that maybe this muzzle device that's on the Hellpup was producing a little bit more of a concussive force that may have messed with the chronograph some. That's just a theory I'm throwing out there because typically longer barrel, doesn't even matter if it's 1.8 inches, uh, will increase your velocity, typically. That's just a theory of mine. Let me know what you guys think, right? But we did see that increase to 2,200 feet per second uh, with the 12.5 inch M plus M, which is a pretty cool design. In the 5.56 video, we also saw that yeah. it went down. Yeah, you know, it's- 12.5 to 14.5. Yeah, so it's, it's weird stuff like that. I, I don't, I don't know. Somebody smarter than me explain that, all right? <laughs> most of our viewers. So moving up from the 12.8 to now the 14.5, like what you see right here on the current giveaway, the Volk, let's talk about this, the increase in velocity that we get there, because 2,200 feet per second, now up to 2,263 feet per second. So just an increase of 63 feet per second from a 12.5 to 14.5. Okay, not huge difference, but that little bit of difference will help downrange a little bit, so not bad. So 14.5, like I said, not all of that drastic. But what about getting into now the 16 inch area, right? Because this right here is pretty much the typical barrel length for most rifles in the United States. To be considered a rifle, this is the minimum distance or the minimum length required uh, to be considered a rifle. If it's shorter than that, you get into AOW range, SBR range, and pistol range or territory. Okay, cool. So. We also remember that the 122 grain Red Army Standard 760 by 39 FMJ uh, said to be 2,350 feet per second average muzzle velocity out of a, what I'm assuming to be a 16 inch barrel. It makes sense though, because in the M70, long stroke piston driven design, just like any other AK out there, uh, we did get 2,344 feet per second. So very small deviation from the 2,350, cool. But we also compared that to another 16 inch gun, the CMMG Resolute, the Mark 47, which is a very cool gun. If, uh, if you haven't seen it talk Russian yet, you might wanna go check that video out. If you don't know what I'm talking about, subscribe or hit that little bell to be notified when we come out with all these videos, okay? So uh, anyway, with this one, we did actually get an increase to 2,365 feet per second. So again, 16 inch barrels, don't know where the increase would come from, but the average was slightly higher with the CMMG. So again, just something to consider. Now, where does that fall into line with? Again, the 122 grain Red Army Standard, they said that the average muzzle velocity is 2,350. Bam, it's right in the middle of where we got these here. So accurate reading coming from Red Army Standard, if you ask me, nicely done, right? So now let's move into a more classic design. I mean, truly, this is a uh, classic firearm, don't you think? The SKS. Uh, now this right here is a 20 inch barrel. So we're making quite the leap now from a 16 inch AK <laughs> Resolute to now a 20 inch SKS. So curious to see what we got out of that. And our average for the 20 inch is 2,367 feet per second. Well, that's interesting because this was 2,365 and adding that much barrel length and weight and overall length of the rifle to get just two feet per second more, seems like a lot to do. Interesting how that works though, right? But what about the 21.5 inch RPK that you see here from Century? Uh, well, that seems a little bit more worth it to me because we got a reading here of 2,450 feet per second, which is a much larger, larger jump from the 16 inch to 20 inch. The 20 to 21 is massive in that sense. So uh, 21.5. So it's like interesting, right? And just to recap, starting all the way with the Galil Ace being the shortest barrel, 8.3 inches, 1,992 feet per second. Compare that to the 21.5, which is 2,450 feet per second. So not a full thousand foot per second difference, 
Uh, however, it is quite significant, right? Uh, now we're looking at the radical 10 inch, 2,189 feet per second, 11.8 inch Hellpop, 2,180. Remember that weird little backwards transition we had here? Uh, the M plus M at 12.5 inches, 2,200 feet per second. 16 inch M70 at 2,344. Forgot about the 14.5 because it's not right here in front of me, out of sight, out of mind, I'm sorry. 2,263 feet per second. Then we got 2,265 out of the CMMG Resolute, uh, 2,365. And then 2,367 out of the 20 inch SKS and then the 2,450 out of the 21 and a half inch RPK. So was Kalashnikov onto something when he figured out that the 16 inch barrel length just seems to be the sweet spot for the 762 by 39 or kind of like how Eugene Stoner did with the 20 inch except was it? Because with maybe more modern loads and everything else, we found that that 12.5 was actually kind of like a solid length for the 5.56 cartridge. But 7.62 by 39 being shot out of a 16 inch barrel just seems to make sense. It seems like you're getting the best of everything when it comes to your compromises. You don't have an overly large or heavy gun to try to get extra velocity and extra performance down range, uh, but you do get still very decent velocity of something a little bit more compact. And the little bit shorter you go, again, it's gonna be ringing true for just about any caliber we shoot. Nine millimeter was a little different. Uh, but the shorter you go, the slower your velocities, the slower type of terminal effect or ballistic effect that you have on your target down range. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind too, especially if you're a hunter with 760 by 39, try to get that little bit added velocity and whatnot out of your longer boys if you can, right? Try to be as humane as possible. So, fun stuff. Which one do you think is gonna best suit your needs, however? And of course, what other calibers do you want us to do these different barrel velocity tests with? Uh, of course, we've already done 9mm, 5.56, 7.62, have we done 6.5 Creedmoor yet? We have. We did 6.5 Creedmoor. No, we haven't. I we didn't did think we did. We did effective range of 6.5. We five. did effective range, but we haven't done barrel testing. So that would be interesting too, but 6.5 Creedmoor is one that you typically find longer barrels for because naturally, I'm sure somebody would make us a short barrel 6.5 Creedmoor. I mean, it's ridiculous, but I'd absolutely do it, right? They do it in 308. That one Galil was like 12 inches. Yeah. My ears are still ringing from that. Anyway, so let me know what other calibers you would like to see uh, for these different types of barrel tests, effective range, things along those lines, or maybe you would like this to see different cartridges stand up to against each other, right? Like I would think a 77 grain open tip match, like maybe the Black Hills uh, 5.56 cartridge versus your standard run of the mill Winchester white box 55 grain, see what type of velocity and performances you get and also maybe points of impact and what type of groups you can get uh, at distance as well. Just let me know if you guys would have fun with that type of stuff. These types of videos do take time though. And uh, we spend a lot of it here in the video room, a lot of it at the range, traveling to the range. And we'd really appreciate it, guys, if you would give us a like, uh, comment down below what some of your favorite barrel lengths are, which size is best for you. And then, of course, like I've mentioned, what other caliber would you like to see tested out? And if you haven't already, I'll mention it one more time, get notified. Hit that little notification bell because, well, we do have a strike right now on the channel. And so we like to try to play it safe as much as possible. Uh, but the more support you guys show us, the more likely YouTube is to keep us here. And this is my job, so please help. Anyway, we'll leave it off there. By the way, if we haven't already made anybody else mad, uh, we like to give away free guns also. So head on over to classicfirearms.com to get your entries in on the gun that I've already talked about here, the 14.5 Meridian Defense Volk. This is a sweet little AK coming with the Sharps Brothers milled lower receiver or the milled receiver just in general uh, with the QD and also the M4 buffer extension. So you can throw on all of your AR types of stocks if you want to. This is also coming with the RS Regulate mount and your EOTech. Uh, a couple of our exclusive US Palm green mags that you see here. You guys love the Lancer ones that we did not too long ago. So we teamed up with US Palm to make some AK ones because why the heck not, right? ALG defense trigger, fantastic. A Magpul hand stop and rail covers. You also notice the SLR hand guard with the integrated Picatinny gas tube. Awesome stuff. And then the silencer code three chamber break, which is gonna fit a multitude of different silencers, which is a pretty cool thing also. So check out our video announcing that as our giveaway if you haven't seen that just yet. And you'll also see all the different silencers it works with. And I'll leave it off there. Code word down below to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. And ladies and gentlemen, as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at ClassicFarms.com.